All right, guys. So we got to talk about this Alexis Vega interview, this entrevista that he did with 2DNA because it's so soft, man. If I had to summarize it in one word, it's soft. It makes Mexico look quite sad. I think it's a bad look for Alexis Vega. I'm going to get into like the human side of it later, you know, trying to play devil's advocate, trying to put myself in Alexis Vega's shoes. But from a fan perspective, it's it's exactly what you don't want to see your best players saying. You don't want to see your best players saying, I don't want to be pushed to perform. That doesn't sound fun. I'd rather stay in Guadalajara. That's not what you want the best players to be saying. You want the best players to be like, how soon can I get to Europe? I'll take a boat. I don't even care. But uh, apparently Alexis Vega is is not interested. And I'm going to pull up the article. We'll we'll talk about it briefly. But most of y'all have probably already seen this. It's making waves on, on Mexican Twitter. And rightfully so. Because it's, it's pretty sad, I would say. Um, if you like videos like this about the Mexican national team in English, hit subscribe and stick around. Let's jump into it. I'm going to share my screen here for you guys. So, okay, Alexis Vega reveals that he turned down an offer to play in Europe. Yeah. So he was saying that he had an offer to play, and if he didn't perform, they were going to he was going to return to Mexico on a different team. So I, I assume he's talking about they would loan him back to a team that's not Chivas. And I'm going to talk about this extension in a second. I'm going to talk about this extension in a second. I should have done a video about that when it signed or when he signed that, but I didn't. But he's basically talking about how like the dream is to play in Europe, right? Or at least in theory. Um, but he didn't want to go because he would have six months to perform at a high level. And if they didn't like him, then he would be sent back. So he's like, I don't want to do this. You know, I don't, uh, no le veo chiste. I don't, I don't see the joke. I don't see what's funny in, in going to play for six months you know, and trying to adapt to a, a high pressure situation. Um, you know, he's talking about, I don't want to, uh, for, for things that were going to rush the decision or the process is what he's saying. Um, I guess the process he's referring to is like, am I going to be a first team guy or not? Like he only has a certain amount of time, certain amount of games to, to convince the manager that he's really got it to play, to play in Europe. You know, now I'm focused on Chivas. I, I'm very happy. Uh, with my family and we're going to stay here. <laughs> we're going to stay here uh, is, is what he said. So, so that's the article. I'll, I'll put that down below so you guys can read it um, in English or Spanish, whatever, whatever floats your boat. I want to know how you guys are feeling about this because I saw it and I thought it was like a fake quote. I'm going to be honest. I thought it was fake, like a joke to start, but it's real. Alexis Vega actually came out and said this. And I think the biggest problem is this highlights a bigger issue within Mexican football, where it seems like Mexican players more than any other goddamn national team, they are so anti-pressure. They're so anti-struggle, which is really strange to me. It's like they get established in Liga Mekis and the desire to leave. I'm not going to say it doesn't exist. I think it does for a lot of these guys, but it's like, unless the salary or the game time is just so good at whatever European club is looking at them, they're just not simply not interested. Like we always talk about the conversation, I think a little incorrectly, which is teams don't want to sell. True. They don't want to sell. Absolutely correct. That is a problem. But what does this say when the players themselves don't want to leave? We're pointing at the directors of these teams like you, you assholes, let the players go. But then you got a star player, one of the guys who's supposed to be one of the focal points for Mexico at the next couple of international tournaments, saying, I'm comfortable here. I want to stay in Guadalajara. What are you supposed to do? And like as a fan base, Chivas fans, I'm sure they saw this and they were like, woo, yeah, like Chivas goaded. Of course, he doesn't want to leave. We're with a shit, you know, but like for, for everybody who's realistic and actually cares about the national team, this is a disaster. We want Alexis Vega to go. Bro, he's 25. He's 25 years old. And I said I was going to talk about this contract extension. He signed a two years, uh, two years extension. I believe it expires in 2024. He's going to be 27. Who is going to sign him? I mean, at 27, he could go somewhere maybe in Serie A. He could go to La Liga for like a mid to bottom table team and try to be the starter for what, four years, five years? But you're not a prospect anymore. You're hardly a prospect at 25. Hardly, especially as a forward. If he was a center back, he's got a little more leeway. Like Cesar Montes, is, uh, he might be 26 and he just left. Uh, thank God, by the way. I'll do a video about that later. Espanol. He's a center back. Those guys are playing until they're 38. You know, look at Pepe. How many, how many like super old wingers? How many 38-year-old wingers are out there? Dude, Ronaldo's 38. 
He ain't even doing it. He's got the best body in the history of football. So my, my point is, it's like he's it sounds like Alexis Vega is trying to let his contract expire before he looks at any serious offers to Europe. And I saw that he was linked with Wolves. I saw that he was linked with Bayern. I'm not buying that shit. Not for one second. Alexis Vega is not Bayern Munich level. Nobody outside of the Chivas fan base could possibly think Alexis Vega is that good. He's not playing for Bayern. Wolves, I didn't like it because I don't like how Wolves play. And I'm, uh, I mean, Alexis Vega, he's a pretty physical player. He's not that big, but he is physical. I don't think he'd get destroyed in the Prem. Like, I think Chugi Lozano gets destroyed in the Prem. I think he's too, he's made of glass. He would get broken. Um, but where am I going with this? I don't even know. Dude, this, uh, this is a totally freestyle video. I apologize. I literally just hopped on and hit record. But um, this is bad, man. This is bad. It shows, it, it's a weakness in the mentality of Mexico. Why do you see certain teams like Morocco, like Japan, who can dig deep and get results against big teams when Mexico can't? Mentalidad. Mentality. Morale. Belief. Desire. Like, this is not desire. This is a man who has achieved what he wants to achieve in life, or at least 95% of it, and he's cool. Does he want to win for the Mexican badge? This badge? Yes, he does. Does he want to get to the level that is required to actually elevate Mexico? Obviously not. Alexis Vega is genuinely speaking like a man who has like five Champions Leagues, two Copa Americas, and a Mundial. That's that's kind of like the attitude that he's giving off. And I'm going to say it's probably a bit of arrogance. I think this guy really thinks he's the shit. And brother, you got six goals for Mexico. Six goals. You're 25. You have six goals. Humble yourself. Look in the mirror. You ain't that good. Could you get better? Yes. Are you going to get better at Chivas? No. And this is like, the heartbreaking thing is like, Mexico needs this guy. They need him because offensively, the prospects are not quite as great as I would argue defensively. I actually think Mexico is quite a few, especially fullbacks, dude. All of a sudden, it's like stacked. It's like 15 left backs, all 18, all starting for their glove. I'm like, where did this come from? It's great, but we need some more offensive firepower going forward. And Alexis Vega is one of the more promising Mexican prospects in recent history. I believe he created the most offensive chances in Liga MX. So you're not a scrub if you do that. You have to be a certain level. He's European quality. No doubt about that. He's not top six quality in the Prem. He's not top four quality in La Liga or Serie A, but he's European quality. And you know what? Maybe his ceiling is like a Sevilla. You know, I hate saying that because if you are horrible to watch, but like a team like that, we are probably going to have this version of Alexis Vega for the rest of the time that he plays for Mexico. When his contract expires, he will likely re-sign with Chivas. He will likely sign an extension once he does not get a lot of European offers coming in. <sighs> it's a loser mentality. And I was starting to like Alexis Vega too, because I really felt like he was one of the few guys putting on for the badge, putting on for Mexico near the end of Tata's reign. I feel like he genuinely did care. And then you just say this and it's like, it disappoints me. Now, I said I was going to defend him. Look, on a, on a human side, I understand why he did this. I understand why Carlos Vela was like, I want to go to the galaxy and chill. I want to play because it is my career. I make money, but I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. I've struggled enough. Okay. I already won at life. If you have that mentality as a human being, you have the right to think like that. Alexis Vega has the right to feel entitled because he he has earned this. He has earned this. Does that mean that we as fans need to agree? Absolutely not. But he's got a wife. I assume he said, I'm, I want to stay here with my family. So I assume he's got a wife and kids. And, and, and in that sense, I respect it. But from a non-Alexis Vega stan point of view, it's not what you want the athletes doing, man. It's not what you want the stars of your national team, the stars of your country, the people that you look up to saying, I'm good. I want to stay. It's one of the problems with Liga Mekis. It's like that it's in that really awkward zone between a league that's like too powerful to like really fall off, but too weak to develop the players that we actually need to win silverware with Mexico. Something's got to give. It's either got to like merge with MLS and it truly becomes the power league in the Americas. I don't know why I said that with, a, <laughs> with an accent. <laughs> I speak in English. I'm like, in the Americas. But um, 
<laughs> Anyways, so maybe that has to happen. And you combine the financial might of two of the wealthiest, two of the top three wealthiest leagues in the Americas, not counting Brazil. And the Argentine League, bro, they're going down. And maybe it can be a league that actually rivals the Europeans outside of Europe. If that does not happen, then it's just going to be a slow death. It's going to be death by a thousand cuts where Liga MX just slowly, steadily loses money, value, attention, clout, uh, reputation. It just ends up being, you know, a dying league. You could argue it's dying now. I don't know what the revenue is looking like. It might even be up, dude. Which, like, how many times you see a, a domestic league, your domestic league, making more money, and you're like, shit. No, I don't want this. That's not what's supposed to happen. But that's how I feel about Liga Meki. It's like Liga Meki's record attendance. I'm like, damn, really? It's like, it's it's so tough, dude. Liga Meki's. I mean, I don't live in Mexico, but I know how much it means to people there. And I've been trying to get into it just because I feel like I should. Uh, I'm not trying to be Tata Martino of, of YouTube, you know, not even watch the league and talk about it. Um, but it's just, man, when, when it's part of life like that, you understand why the players don't want to leave. Alexis Vega, um, he probably ain't making it to Europe. Latest in a growing list, a concerning list of Mexicans who look like they're never quite going to make the jump, the salto to Europe. Um, Kevin Alvarez signing that extension with Pachuca. I think that was for four years. It's going to be like 26 when that expires. <sighs> Christ almighty. God help us. That's the video, guys. That was a rant and a half. Good God. I'm so sorry. I knew this was going to be long. I knew it was going to be long. If you uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Hit subscribe if you want to see more videos <laughs> like this one about Mexico in English. Hopefully more concise, a little more organized. I'm going to be doing a transfer uh, recap probably this week. Uh, or this will come in the weekend, but next week, maybe when all the windows actually open, things become a little more official. I'll make a video about that. Let me know any other videos, topics you guys want me to talk about in the comments. Uh, check out our podcast, Dead Ball TV podcast. Me and my friends do it, you know, once a week. It's pretty fire. I think it's pretty fire. You check it out. Playlist on the YouTube channel, all on streaming platforms as well. I appreciate you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.